I'm here to tell you about 100 of the most disturbing movies ever made. And if you immediately want to start off with the list, just skip to this time mark in the video. I just want to use a little introduction to explain how I came to these 100 titles. So, if you're not familiar with my channel, I did a 15 part video series on the most disturbing movies ever made, in which I cover a total of 100 movies, all of which you'll find here, conveniently, in one video. Most of the movies I cover in those videos were recommended by the viewers, others I found, you know, like online on other top lists, and a few are personal contributions. So, this is definitely not a personal, like, top 100 or anything. It's just me trying to make a, a nice overview of, of movies that are considered to be disturbing. Y you know, just as a, as a a reference for people that are interested in the in the dark side of cinema and yeah well that also means that there are gonna be a few movies that I really didn't care for but hey so I decided to just list them alphabetically so there won't be any arguing about oh, this one's more disturbing than that one you know it's just in random order but alphabetically okay let's do this We'll start off with a documentary, The Act of Killing, where we follow ex-gangsters in Indonesia who talk about and reenact how they killed hundreds of people back in the mid-60s when they were part of a death squad during an anti-communist purge. <laughs> yeah, what a story. Quite intense to see how these guys talk about this stuff and somewhat reflect on it. Very interesting, also in its portrayal of Indonesia. Aftermath, a short movie about necrophilia. That's literally all there is to it. But it's made somewhat artistically, you know, it looks good, interesting soundtrack, but obviously a taboo subject matter. It only runs for 30 minutes and that's exactly enough. We're checking out. Number 3, An American Crime, based on an American crime. The 1965 murder of Sylvia Likens in Indianapolis. Sad story that's very well acted and manages to be quite disturbing without showing too much, you know, gratuitous violence. Highly recommend it. American Mary, a sorta edgy body horror in a way, movie about Mary who ends up in the underground body modification scene. Nice production value and when it comes to disturbing movies, this one is, is quite accessible and, well not unimportant, quite enjoyable. Number 5, Angst, an Austrian serial killer movie that puts you right there, you know, right in the mind of a serial killer. This point of view, together with the awesome creative cinematography and quite dark tone, makes for a very interesting watch. One of the better serial killer movies that I've seen. Antichrist by Lars von Trier, an, I guess, an art film about a couple that's trying to cope with the loss of their child at an isolated cabin in the woods where they both start to experience strange behavior. I'm, I'm personally, I'm not a big fan, even though I know it does have quite the fan base. Purely from a disturbing movie's point of view, <laughs> there are definitely a few scenes that are quite out there to say the least. Audition, often found on disturbing movies list, about a widow who wants to start dating again and sets up a fake audition to meet women. In all honesty, it's not that disturbing. People usually talk about the last 15 minutes or so, but up till that point it's just a rather slow drama with, with horror elements. Definitely not a bad movie, albeit perhaps a little bit overhyped when it comes to uh, being disturbing. Numbers 8 till 10, the infamous August Underground trilogy. Shot on VHS from, you know, like from the killer's point of view. The idea is that it's like that you've just found the, the video diaries of some psychotic killers. When it comes to fake snub movies, this is probably as close as you're gonna get, but whether that's a good thing? I mean, I respect the filmmakers for what they try to achieve and I think they definitely achieved what they were going for. But it doesn't make for very watchable or, you know, even enjoyable movies. Very gruesome though and, in that sense, very disturbing. Bad Boy Bobby, an Australian movie about a guy that's been living with his abusive mother inside this small apartment for his whole life, but eventually goes out for the first time to explore the outside world. Even though it covers quite some taboo topics, it can just as well be seen as a black comedy. I feel like at, at one point it doesn't really go anywhere, but hey, it's, it's very watchable, it's a pretty unique little movie. Be Garden, if this was a top list, this one would definitely be at the bottom. Apparently it's a retelling of the story of Genesis, but it's so boring, to a point that, to me at least, it becomes unwatchable. The only redeeming factor is the, 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 the way it looks, you know, like the whole look and feel. It, it's pretty awesome. But that alone definitely can't save this one. Documentary about suicide at the Golden Gate Bridge in, in San Francisco, which apparently is a hotspot for jumpers. Consider disturbing because it shows actual footage of people jumping down the bridge. Interesting subject matter, documentary wise it's, it's okay. I wish it would go a little more in depth, but um, you know, it was, it was okay. 
Oh god, the, the Barney game, where the main actress in some way literally had to go through all the torture and stuff her character in the movie goes through. Which isn't a bad concept, it's just a bad movie. Annoying editing, unbearable soundtrack, and in the end it's just a been there, done that torture porn. 15. The infamous Caligula, starring Malcolm McDowell, about the rise and fall of the third Roman Emperor, Caligula. The history of the production of the movie itself is it's half the fun. But the movie, it's it's not bad, actually. It's pretty interesting. It just turned into the, the whole exploitation realm with the insertion of hardcore pornography, which is mostly responsible for its reputation. But not bad. Calvaire, it's French for the ordeal. A Belgian movie that sets itself apart from the many French language extreme horror flicks from around that time with a more artistic approach. It's a, it's a little slow, but pretty good with, with more mental than physical torture. Worth checking out, even if it's just for the surreal bar scene. Cannibal, by the controversial German filmmaker Marian Dora, about the real-life case of Armin Maives, uh, who found a voluntary victim online for his cannibalistic needs. Twisted movie because of its subject, but at the same time it's a weird love story because of the way it's portrayed. Interesting, but <laughs> not for everybody. Cannibal Ferox, you know, that one cannibal movie that isn't Cannibal Holocaust. It's still gruesome with all the right ingredients for some classic Italian cannibal exploitation, but it just simply isn't the movie it probably wanted to be, <laughs> which is Cannibal Holocaust, uh, one of the most infamous movies on this list. Personal favorite, because it's, it's just well made and to me it's genuinely disturbing. And not just because of the animal cruelty, although it does add to the, the viewing experience and it is part of what makes this movie. But though, yeah, must see for people that are interested in disturbing cinema. 20. A Clockwork Orange, of course, by Stanley Kubrick. Where we follow Alex and his shenanigans in a dystopian futuristic Britain. It's a classic. You know, not, not, not even within the disturbing movie scene, but in, in cinema in general. Not sure exactly what to say about this one, just check it out if you haven't already. Come and see, it's the only war movie on this list. And it's a good one, uh, told from the perspective of a kid who joins the partisans to fight against the Germans. And it shows the true horror of war, without having to be too graphic. It may appear a little dated to some, but don't let that stop you from checking this one out. It's really good. Cutting Moments, a short movie, and I honestly always wondered a bit why this one is considered to be so disturbing. It's basically just a setup to a gory finale, with perhaps an underlying message, but not really. With its 25 minute running time, it's, it's not too bad to give it a try, just don't expect anything mind-blowing. This one, however? <laughs> Dear Zagary, a heartbreaking documentary that the filmmaker made for the son of his murdered friend, who was killed before, you know, little Zagary was born. Check it out, it's all I can say. It's, it's very intense, very well made, you know, like very well edited. Just, you know, bring a tissue. Dogtooth, a Greek movie about a family that keeps their children oblivious to the real outside world. Which in the end can be interpreted as a critical look on, on society and media and propaganda. The movie itself delivers some surreal and weirdly entertaining scenery and it's a quite interesting original watch. 25, the documentary Erdlings, which basically tells the viewer that they're part of the worst species that has ever lived. Basically just an animal ride movie that's disturbing because of its shocking images of how animals are treated in five different industries. As a documentary, I don't even think that it's that well made, but you know, it sure gets its message across. Eden Lake, a surprisingly effective British horror movie about a couple that goes on a little trip, only to have that trip ruined by some annoying kids. Annoying as in borderline psychotic. But the movie, it's a good production, well directed, resulting in an intense little ride. Definitely worth checking out. Enter the Void, the first out of three Gaspar Noé movies on this list. Here we have a two and a half hour long visual experience that's it very well made. The look and feel, the sound and cinematography, everything works together. It's just, besides not being really disturbing, also not really accessible, so yeah, proceed with caution. Eraserhead, David Lynch's debut feature film. Disturbing in a, in a different way, no gore or torture, it's more the dark and surreal tone it gets to you. I never really tried to understand this one, I always just view it as a, as a nightmarish drama, but despite not really getting this movie, I enjoy it and I appreciate it as a classic work of cinematic art. 
Next Drummer, a Belgian movie about a famous writer who joins a music band of misfits. Visually very creative, sometimes quite surreal and not shy to break the fourth wall. But also somewhat disturbing in, well, basically just all the weird shit the different characters go through. Yeah, quite intense, but at the same time, funny, it's, yeah, well, you just have to see for yourself. Number 30, the infamous Faces of Death. Although half the material in this documentary is fake and there's way worse stuff out there like the Traces of Death movies or basically anything on any gore site, I covered this one because it was the first, you know, the first to take the Mondo concept and focus it purely on the theme of death. So, from a historical point of view, pretty interesting. The movie itself, not really. Feed, about the feeder fetish gone wrong. Not a bad concept, but after a somewhat promising start, in my opinion it falls flat pretty quickly. There's definitely some disturbing ideas, it's just not that well executed and at points it's definitely more disgusting than it is disturbing. Frontiers, uh, one of the better known movies in the new French extremity wave of horror movies. So that like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre on steroids, this one mixes horror, action and entertainment rather successfully. Not one to overthink, just check it out and enjoy the ride. At one third of the list, the original Austrian funny games. Basically a commentary on how we perceive violence in media, although some people like to think it's stupid to read into this movie any deeper than its surface. In that case you're just left with a home invasion movie that, for gorehounds, is definitely not satisfying. Nevertheless, it's pretty intense, I, I like it. And Funny Games, the American shot for shot remake by the same director. Literally the exact same movie, just different American actors. I personally, I prefer the original, I think it gives better performances and it looks a little less polished. You know, it helps for me. Although it's probably just a personal preference. The Girl Next Door, based on the same crime case as number 3, an American crime, although this one is a much more loose interpretation of the actual events. And here they went for full shock value, making it very mean and graphic. And to be honest, it works. So if you want disturbing, pick this one. If you're interested in the story, pick an American crime. Or, you know, just watch them both. Adios, Zio Tom, or a Goodbye Uncle Tom in English. A semi-documentary about slavery in the southern United States, you know, before the Civil War. Basically just a reenactment of life in that era, but while watching you just can't believe that this movie is actually made. Whether it's just racial exploitation or, in fact, criticism on racism, that's up to you. I was actually quite impressed by this movie and oh, I love the soundtrack. The Green Elephant, a Russian movie about two officers locked in a prison where they have to go through both physical and psychological torture. I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone that's not familiar with Russian language and culture because from what I understand from comments I got on my video from Russian viewers, almost everything here is lost in translation. Grotesque, um, simply put, Japanese torture porn. I'm not big on the term torture porn, but you know, if it would refer to anything, it would be movies like this. It's nothing but over the top torture for the sake of torture. Um, the, the movie's not bad, it's, it's really it's just that, grotesque for the sake of being grotesque. 39, and here we have the first out of four movies from the infamous Japanese guinea pig horror series. Low budget shuckers that were made in the mid to late 80s. The Devil's Experiment is a semi-snuff movie where a group of guys experiment on a girl, basically to see how much pain she can endure. Nasty stuff. Flowers of Flesh and Blood, the second and probably most infamous installment, where we see a guy, well, basically just dismembering a woman. The effects are, are pretty good, um, in my opinion the most interesting one, so if you only see one guinea pig movie, make sure it's this one. After two semi-snuff movies, the series takes a turn with He Never Dies, a goofy horror comedy about a guy who finds out that he can't die and decides to goof around with his new superpower. It's, it's okay, some cool effects, but really nothing that interesting. And, well, not the last guinea pig movie made, but the last one on this list, Mermaid in a Manhole, about an artist that finds a sick mermaid and becomes obsessed with her. It makes for some rather nasty scenes and it's more disgusting than it is disturbing, but I don't know, it, it does have some merit to it. Gummo, about the day-to-day -day pointless lives of the survivors of a small poor town that got hit by a tornado. With no traditional narrative and mostly non-actors, it succeeds in delivering an odd level of realism. I can surely appreciate the movie, but it's hard for me to explain what exactly I like about it. Definitely worth checking out if you want to see something different than your everyday disturbing horror movie. 
happiness, a drama or, well, as some would argue, a very dark comedy about the life of three sisters and the people around them. They all have their secrets covering some quite taboo topics. The, the writing, directing and, and definitely the acting are top notch and it's refreshing to be able to get disturbed by something that's not rape and torture, you know? Hard Candy, where a 14 year old girl meets up with a much older guy that she met online. And then things take a dark turn. Great performances, beautiful cinematography and, and the whole color grading, the whole look and feel. It's, it's really just a well made, intense little movie. Definitely worth checking out. Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, a movie based on the lives of serial killers Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole. It's very dark and grim, unlike many other horror movies that came out in the mid-80s. And even though it has quite a dedicated fan base, I myself, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan. Still, not bad though. High Tension, a graphic horror movie in which a psycho killer goes after two girls during their vacation. It's pretty cool, until the ending which usually divides the viewer in two groups. Some love it, some hate it. Well, maybe three groups, because I'm actually in between. Check it out and uh, see for yourself. Ah, The Human Centipede, the only movie on this list that's from the country that I'm from, the Netherlands. In recent years, often named one of the most disturbing movies ever made, but I still stand by my point of view, like my opinion, that the movie is never worse than the idea itself. I guess it's still essential viewing for people looking for disturbing movies, just don't expect it to be that bad. And of course, the sequel, which in my opinion is the depraved, graphic, messed up movie the first one should have been. It's so over the top that sometimes I wonder if it was indeed intended to be just like a very dark comedy. Still, definitely more disturbing than the first part. Yeah, I, I wonder how crazy the third and final part is going to be. On number 50, oh man, halfway through. Well, this list is long. We have I Saw the Devil, a Korean cat and mouse murder revenge movie that's pretty badass. Awesome antagonist and protagonist, great graphic effects, very nice soundtrack and in general just a wild ride. Definitely recommend it. I Spit on Your Grave, the infamous rape and revenge movie. And that's what it's about, a woman getting raped and afterwards getting her revenge. It hasn't aged too well, but it's worth checking out as it is a classic in the exploitation genre and you'll often find it on other uh, disturbing movies lists. But if you're like, fuck that, it really didn't age well, we have the modern day remake for you, which is actually pretty good. Same story with some minor alterations, it's basically just an updated version that's just easier to watch. Can't blame you if you prefer this one over the original. And then the sequel to the remake, which tries a different angle, which is fresh, but it just falls short compared to its prequel. A little less believable, a little less satisfying, overall just a little less enjoyable. It's still worth checking out, you know, like on, on a date night or, you know, whenever. I Stand Alone, the second Gaspar Noé movie, and even though we still have to get to Irreversible, I'd say that this is perhaps his most disturbing one, because it doesn't rely on 10 minute rave scenes. Here we just get a man and a dark view on life and morality. And with just that, it gets pretty intense. Yeah, highly recommend it. Only one Nazi exploitation movie on this list, so why not the most infamous one? Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS. It's almost too ridiculous to take seriously, and I guess the impact has decreased a little over time. But it's still worth a watch, even if it's just to see a perfect example of what is perhaps one of the strangest subgenres of horror and exploitation. Imprint, Takeshi Miike's contribution to the American series Masters of Horror, which was deemed too disturbing for TV. Besides the, well in my opinion, annoying performance by the main character, it's pretty interesting with a few gut-wrenching scenes and a, a classic Miike finale. In a Glass Cage, definitely one of the darkest movies on this list. It's about a paralyzed ex-Nazi child molester who gets a new male nurse who happens to be one of his victims from years before. A very uncomfortable watch where your limits are put to the test, but at the same time it's very well shot and shows some great performances. Highly recommend it as a disturbing movie. A l'intérieur, or Inside, another one of the extreme French horror movies from the past decade. And this one is just that, a fun, gory horror flick about a pregnant woman that's being attacked by an intruder. No deeper meaning, just boom, 80 minutes of gory fun. 59, the infamous Irreversible, a story concerning rape and murder that's told backwards, so it starts with the end and it ends with the beginning. Controversial because of two scenes, the rape and the murder, and those two are definitely enough to leave a nasty taste in your mouth. I'm not the biggest fan, but I guess there's no way around this while exploring disturbing cinema. Kill List, a British thriller I'd say about two ex-hitmen taking on a new mission. 
And believe me, it's less corny than it sounds. It's a slow burner, but when it's intense, it's really intense. I really like the characters and the acting in this one, and even though it comes with an ending that divides the audience in two, it's definitely worth checking out. The Last House on the Left, the original 1970s rape and revenge movie, where two girls run into the wrong group of criminals. Even seeing it today, it's still pretty gruesome. Imagine having seen this movie some 40 plus years ago. Classic exploitation, not to be missed for disturbing cinema fans. And the modern day remake. Even though it's not bad, I just thought it's less effective than the original. They changed the ending, probably to be less of a downer, which really wasn't necessary. Um, it's okay. I personally would just rather see the original again. The Life and Death of a Porno Gang, a Serbian movie that, among other depraved topics, explores the idea of making snuff films. It's very raw, very in your face, definitely not as polished as a certain other Serbian film. And even though the storyline could have been a little better worked out at points, it's still worth checking out, definitely if you want some shocking, disturbing stuff. Men Bites Dog, a Belgium mockumentary about a film crew that follows the life of a serial killer. And just because of the, I mean if you think about it, ridiculous plot, it could be labeled as a black comedy, but it's actually pretty smart with a critical look on the role of media and society. It loses some of the flow halfway through, but it never becomes uninteresting. Ah, Martyrs, one of my favorite movies on the whole list. A brutal French horror movie that covers a lot of emotions. It's sad, depressing, scary, exciting, infuriating, and so on. The plot as of right now isn't even that important. If you haven't seen this movie yet, and you're looking for a good, and dare I say it, entertaining, disturbing movie, definitely check this one out. You won't be disappointed. Two-third in, um, Megan is Missing, a movie that explores the whole online sexual predator thing. Shot in a way that it's supposed to be real, you know, like with webcams and telephone cameras, it's actually just rather silly. The bad acting by some, if not most, of the characters definitely does not help. The idea, you know, the concept of the movie, it's not bad, but the execution definitely is. Melancholy Der Engel, or The Angel's Melancholy, by the same director who did Cannibal earlier on this list. This is a movie that, since its release, is often mentioned as one of the most disturbing movies ever made. Since my German isn't that good and I haven't seen a subtitled version, it's hard to explain what's going on, but it just plays as a series of bizarre, perverted, depraved sequences. It's pretty hard to watch, and not just because it's so fucked up, it's also just long and confusing. Proceed with caution, also because of some of the animal cruelty. Man Behind the Sun, a Hong Kong movie about the human experiments conducted by the Japanese at Unit 731 during World War II. Which actually happened, and this movie does a great job portraying the horrors that happened over there. Sick stuff, making it quite a controversial movie, but the movie itself, it's not bad. I'd say, essential, disturbing cinema material. Mum and Dad, a British movie where a girl ends up in the hands of a messed up family. Plot-wise, it's really nothing new, but I don't know, it's just pretty well executed. Very watchable, entertaining, little disturbing, nothing mind-blowing, but surely it's, it's worth checking out. 70. Murder Set Pieces, a rather forgettable slasher flick, I guess, about a photographer who turns serial killer by night. Badly written, directed and acted, it's really just painfully boring to watch. There's quite some blood during certain scenes, but none of that really makes it worth checking out. Necromantic, as in necro and romantic, a German low-budget movie about a couple that's into necrophilia. But even in this relationship, jealousy becomes an issue. Despite the taboo subject matter and obvious technical shortcomings, it's pretty entertaining. Whether it's an art movie or just total crap, that's up to you to decide. My opinion, mm, somewhere in the middle. And the sequel, Necromantic 2. Oh wow, this movie is boring as hell. Not nearly as interesting as the first one. The only thing worth checking out is the ending, which is pretty cool. But besides that, it's extremely slow and mostly just controversial because they show a pointless seal autopsy. The infamous Neku Daruma that goes by a hundred different names. The first half is basically a porno, and the second half is supposed to be real, where the crew tortures and dismembers the female actress. Unfortunately, the effects aren't that convincing, so despite it being rather nasty and very mean-spirited, it's also just kinda silly. Extreme for the sake of being extreme, I would say. Philosophy of a Knife, based on the same war crimes that we saw in Men Behind the Sun, except here they decided to make it a four hour long art film. 
First of all, it's about three and a half hours too long. Second, that's it's it's just too long and boring and unconvincing and simply put, in my opinion, a complete waste of time. 75 Pink Flamingos by legendary trash filmmaker John Waters. Disturbing in this movie comes more in the form of being disgusting since basically the movie is about two families competing for the title of filthiest people alive. It's very low budget, very campy and because of that everything that should be really disturbing is mostly just entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> classic trash. The Poughkeepsie Tapes, a found footage horror movie that explores the work of a New York serial killer. The idea, albeit not very original, is pretty cool, you know, where they find the killer's videotapes and so on. But the overall acting kills almost any form of believability, which really ruins the movie. It still manages to be creepy at parts, but in my opinion, could have been a lot better. Ah, Requiem for a Dream, the ultimate feel-good movie. That was a joke, obviously, since this movie shows you the depressing results of drug addiction. So, combine three tragic stories with good performances, awesome cinematography and a great soundtrack and you got yourself a winner. Or a loser. Because when you use drugs and alcohol, especially drugs, you always lose. Anyway, highly recommend it. Ah, there we have it guys, the infamous Salo, based on the book by Marquise de Sade, you know, the guy whose name originated the term sadism. Set in Italy during World War II, this movie tells the story of a couple of fascist men that capture a bunch of teenagers to exploit in the worst possible ways imaginable, just for their own pleasure. And yeah, you'll witness some truly depraved and sick stuff. There's an obvious underlying message slash social commentary about authority and the abuse of power and whatnot, but in the end, I personally am not the biggest fan. But in this case, you know, for the list, it doesn't even really matter. No disturbing movie list is complete without this movie, so check it out at your own risk. Seed by the always unpopular Uwe Bolle. It tells the story of a psycho killer that's sentenced to death, but uh uh oh, and then he takes revenge. Not very original, and to be honest, quite bad. It has some disturbing ideas, and if it was better made, it would have been quite disturbing. But unfortunately, it's not the case. <laughs> it's just pretty bad. Ah, another mandatory title on this list, a Serbian film, about an ex-porn star that signs up for a secret film project that soon goes pretty out of control. In recent years, often called the most disturbing movie ever made because of its graphic sexual violence and the infamous baby rape scene. But it's actually an overall very well made movie, very well watchable, it's just very graphic and well, even as some would argue, a little too over the top which would take away from the disturbingness. Nevertheless, it's quite out there, must see for fans of extreme and disturbing cinema. Shogun Sadism, a Japanese movie that tells two separate stories set in the Edo period. Despite the second story's well more campy approach, they're still both quite brutal. Perhaps the movie didn't age that well and lost some of its impact making it more enjoyable rather than disturbing, but it's still well definitely worth checking out. Singapore Sling, and there's no way a three sentence review is gonna do this surreal black and white Greek drama thriller any justice. It's such a unique movie that features some both disturbing and disgusting imagery, but in the end it's it's really just a one of a kind movie that has to be seen to be, well, well not believed, but to at least understand what I'm trying to talk about here. The Skin I Live In, a Spanish, relatively big budget psychological thriller about a plastic surgeon that works a little outside of his professional work area. It has great production value, great direction and it's disturbing in a non-torture porn way. You just watch while the story unfolds until it hits you like boom. Huh. Yeah, awesome movie, highly recommended. Snowtown from Australia, based on Australia's worst serial killer case. Don't expect to be highly entertained while watching this one because it is slow, but in my opinion it's worth it. Fantastic performances that really make the movie and, and a gruesome story without having to be too graphic. Worth checking out if you like to see a well directed true crime story. 85 Snob 102, a barely watchable Argentinian horror movie that plays with the idea of a snuff movie. While it potentially had some okay-ish ideas, it's all ruined by the crappy amateuristic cinematography, editing, sound design, all of which makes it look more like a poor student film. It's oh, annoying as hell. Stoic, second movie by Uwe Bolle, and this one is actually really good. 
It tells a story about a small argument between inmates in a prison cell that soon escalates pretty badly. Almost all of the acting, or well, the dialogue, is improvised, which gives it a real, natural, realistic feel, and that does wonders to this movie. Really intense, yeah, I thought it was really good. Recommend it. Subconscious Cruelty, an independent art film that tells four different stories, some surreal, some, well, more or less straightforward. But I really don't know what to do with it. I mean, it looks pretty cool, and I guess it has some message going on, but I don't get it. I also don't really care. To me, it feels like art for art's sake. Sweet Movie, a highly controversial movie by a Yugoslavian director that's divided in two stories, and together it's like a commentary on communism and modern culture. It's... oh wow, it's out there. There's some seriously disgusting performance art, as well as some disturbing borderline pedophilia. It's... Uh, it's really a movie you have to see to believe. I'm still not quite sure what to think of it, but <laughs> it's definitely an experience. Taxidermia, an Hungarian movie that tells the nation's recent history, but is disguised as a both disturbing and disgusting surreal story divided in three segments. Since I'm not too familiar with Hungarian history, most of the political commentary is lost on me, and then all there's left is just a bizarre movie. But one that is still uh, pretty entertaining. 90. Teeth. Really not that disturbing, besides the fact that it's about a girl that discovers that she has teeth in her vagina. <laughs> yeah, um, but besides that, it's just a quirky, dark comedy. It's pretty entertaining though, I'm just not sure why I ever included this one in one of my videos, but oh well. Tetsuo, a Japanese cyberpunk art film that tells the story of a man that slowly transforms into a metal being. It looks amazing and you really just have to see it as an audio-visual experience. <laughs> That's, I guess, the best way to describe it. It even manages to, to be quite creepy at times. Definitely not for everyone, though. And its sequel, Tetsuo 2, Body Hammer. The artistic approach made room for a bigger budget and a more straightforward plot, which the hardcore fans didn't really like, but I actually don't mind it. Even though, in essence, they're more or less the same movie, at the same time they're completely different, and I don't think it's really fair to compare them. Not really disturbing, but pretty cool. Threats, a British TV movie about what would happen in the UK during and after a nuclear war. It's slow, but intense, and disturbing in a weird, oh wow, what if they would actually happen one day, kind of way. Quite depressing with its depiction of a nuclear winter, it's, it's scary in a completely different way. Vaas de Norge, uh, perhaps better known as the big fucking movie. It's, it's a Belgium art film that, I don't know guys, the, the title says enough I guess. But I thought it was extremely boring and uninteresting. And you know, relevant to this list, not even really disturbing at all. Yeah, you're, you're not missing out on this one. Visitor Q by the prolific Japanese director Takeshi Miike and here you have a black comedy that covers about every taboo imaginable. From domestic violence to drug abuse, prostitution to rape and from incest to necrophilia. But because of its comedic approach it's very watchable and mostly just disturbing in its themes, not so much its content. Check it out if you're in for some extreme Japanese cinema. Ah, here we have the controversial Vomit Gore trilogy, consisting out of great titles such as Slaughtered Vomit Dolls, Regurgitated Sacrifice, and Slow Torture Puke Chamber. Mostly just a personal fetish movie trilogy for the director. It shows a lot of vomit and depraved graphic sexual violence, but the movies themselves look more like edgy student horror movies in the way that they're shot and edited. It's safe to say that these movies are disturbing. <laughs> You'll definitely see stuff in here that you won't see in any other movies on this list. But my problem with the movies is that they're just almost unwatchable. And not because of the content, but because of the lack of a narrative and, and the way they're made. Definitely not for me, but you know, some of you might get a kick out of it. 99. We need to talk about Kevin. A story about a mother that's trying to cope with the feeling of, well, failing as a mother and bringing up the most annoying son ever. It's very gloomy with quite a shocker towards the end, but I love the way it's shot and, and acted, it's really well done. Little slow here and there, but still, recommended. And last but not least, but <laughs> definitely not among the good ones, Where Did Dad Go To Die? An animated feature that tells three stories with the one more deranged and twisted than the other. 
Sure, the, the content is over the top offensive, but the quality of the animation and the wacky voice acting really destroys all that would potentially be disturbing. And now you're just left with a psychedelic nightmarish mess. So, before I wrap up this video, here are some honorable mentions. Movies that are reviewed on my channel, but not as part of the, the disturbing movie series. Just, just separate reviews, but still movies that would pop up every now and then as a recommendation for, for disturbing movies. So, uh, really quick. That Girl, the not completely believable story about two teenagers that find a, well, a living dead girl and decide to use her as their personal sex toy. Mostly disturbing in its idea, the movie itself, it, it's watchable, it's okay if you don't overthink it too much. Compliance, the true story of what happens when authority abuses its power to take advantage of the, well, the, the lesser intelligence. Infuriating story, but, but very well believable acting and, and a great offbeat soundtrack. I actually really like this one. The Woman, where a seemingly normal family shows its true colors after the father takes a feral woman in house. Some people really seem to like this one, I honestly didn't really care for it, so I'd say check it out for yourself. The Loved Ones, an Australian movie about a psychotic girl that starts torturing this guy after he kindly rejected her when she asks him to be her prom date. I thought the, the girl was a little annoying and well, well it's actually just like with The Woman. Quite some people love this one, I didn't really care for it. The Untold Story, uh, based on a true crime, it tells the story of this maniacal chef who, well, among other things, cooks human flesh into meat buns. Half the movie follows a cop squad that's trying to figure out what's going on and they are so goofy, killing most of the disturbing atmosphere. Still, pretty gruesome. Ebola Syndrome, perhaps a little less funny now with the recent outbreak, but um, it tells the outrageous story of a man that catches the Ebola virus, but who is immune to it and then just goes around infecting the hell out of everybody. Very over the top, but, but very entertaining in a twisted way. Excision, where we follow a troubled teenage girl with a twisted mind. It's really just days in the life of, where we see her sexually perverted fantasies and just general awkwardness. I love the whole quirky look and feel, really entertaining movie, although some people think the ending went a little too far. Old Boy, a modern masterpiece from Korea, which is all about the theme of vengeance. It's about a guy that for no apparent reason is imprisoned and then 15 years later is released and goes out and about to find out who's responsible and why. One of my favorite movies, it's damn near perfect in any aspect. Really intense, amazing filmmaking, highly recommend it. Besides these, there are definitely more movies that I could have covered. You know, like uh, Kids, Bully, and Ken Park, all by Larry Clark. But I never covered those because I always thought, like, oh, one day I'll do a, like, a Cinema of Larry Clark video. Same goes for Suicide Club, uh, Strange Circus, and Coldfish, all by Sion Sono. Could have mentioned those as well, but, you know, one day I'll, I'll cover those in a separate video. So yeah, you know, I probably missed a few, but like I said in the beginning, these were hundred of the most disturbing movies. Not THE hundred most disturbing movies. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Video. Hopefully it was helpful for you to discover some new disturbing movies and you know let me know in the comments which movies I forgot and then you know maybe I'll pick it up at uh, part 16 one day. Have a nice day.